All right, you guys, good morning. So we got the Fox body in the garage today. This does not happen very often. I don't get to work in the garage. So we're gonna take advantage of that. We're actually gonna be doing a lot of stuff that's been commented on multiple times, which is the front end of this car. As you guys can see, it is not in the greatest of shape. All the body lines don't line up. The paint is chipped horrendously all the way up to the cowl in this car. Realistically, from the, the windshield back, the car isn't too bad. Uh, we got a couple scuffs on the door, but nothing that I can't manage. But the front of the car looks terrible. We have buckles and dents and dings and just just things i'm not happy with on this thing and i have long-term goals with the car and for now it's just something that's bugged me to the point where i think i can fix it i went to the junkyard and we actually cut off a cow off another car uh, so i do have one of those have another hood i don't have different fenders unfortunately or a different front bumper so i'll have to rework these i have not ugly headlights i have stock headlights to put back in it a bunch of stuff and so i figure if I have the weekend, I have the garage, and I have a little bit of motivation, I think we can make something cool happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by going ahead and taking all the parts off that I know are gonna be junk. Uh, I'm gonna start by body working out some of these fenders, get the front fascia off, and go ahead and body work it out, and uh, get ready to paint, paint this thing. I do actually have the base coat clear coat for this car, uh, and I think realistically it wouldn't be a crazy idea to spray it, so why not, right? <laughs> so let's get after it. All right, guys, so one of the bigger issues with this car is actually the front fascia. Uh, the header panel on this car is completely destroyed. Uh, it's been like that since I bought it, which so all the adjusters that hold in the headlights don't do anything. They're all broken. So the headlights have just kind of been sitting in there on both sides. They do this. So I got a new header panel. So the first thing we're going to start is basically pull the hood off. Uh, I got one of my friends to come help me do that. And I'll pull the whole front clip off. So I'm going to start by doing the header panel, fix that up, and then we can immediately mock up new headlights and start that. Uh, unfortunately, the header panel that goes behind this whole thing is white for whatever stupid reasons. So we're going to have to paint it. So that's pretty annoying, but we'll get after it. All right, well, this car's actually always had like what I would call a droopy front end. And now I think I finally figured out why. So you can see it kind of like slopes forward at the, at the front fascia here uh, versus like the back of it straight. And then once it hits like this part, there's a kink in the fender right there. You can see that little, little bubble right there. And naturally the fender bows a little bit downward, but right here, you can see this like whole part of the front bumper and mostly the header panel is like warped. Um, so it looks like it was like drooping down. I mean, it makes sense as to why it, it has a droopy front end. Uh, so this is the header panel. This is what we're gonna be replacing because you can see all this stuff's broken and trimmed out and nothing is really the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, so we do have another one of those. It is white, unfortunately, so I'll have to paint it, but I'll just rattle can it real quick and then throw it in there. You won't really see it. But yeah, I gotta pretty much rivet or drill like break out all these rivets uh, so I can get all this stuff off. So I can sand and repaint the grill. I do have another badge for the front and then I'll go ahead and make sure all this stuff looks halfway decent again. So I've got a bunch of rivets to get out. I gotta split the front bumper from the fender and pull that off and then I can start kind of figuring out what I want to do. But we will not be running these ugly headlights anymore. Sorry, I hate them. I've never liked these. I just kind of tolerated them. All right guys, well we got the whole front end of the car off and you can really see, I mean, the front end of this thing was the bumper it specifically was like the root of all the ugliness. See, there's chips, there's cracks, there's bugs, there's spray paint, there's other spray paint. It's, it's bad. <laughs> Very, very bad. Looks like somebody hit something here. Uh, so there's a there's a pretty good crease in the bumper, which I'm not sure I want. I know how I want to fix yet. I'm probably gonna end up having a fiberglass on the backside and put filler on the top. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. The front end of the car, though, looks pretty good. Um, nothing too out of the abnormal here, at least. But you can see the rest of the car looks good, like up to here. Um, I am still gonna repaint these fenders, mostly because of the chips and whatnot. This one, really, I could probably get away with leaving, but the other one is the bad one. So the one on this side, you can see there's chips all over it. Uh, as well as down here, um, so that'll all need to be fixed. So I'm gonna start get it going at it and body working this thing. First, I'm gonna do is body work the front of this. Like I said, the header panel's broken, so I need to get all these rivets out. So I'm gonna get driven, drilling all these out, and we're gonna open up our new header panel and uh, get it painted. Hey guys, 
A bunch of you have commented this, and this is what I can find the only good use of a football to be, is we're gonna actually slip this thing in here. We're gonna deflate it a little more, obviously. I had a basketball, obviously never used it before, so it, but it didn't fit, so Sean brought this. We're probably gonna ruin it, but I don't care. This obviously hasn't been used in a long time. Way more effective use of football, if you ask me. So, what you guys suggest is we're gonna deflate this pretty much all the way. It'll slip pretty much under here like that, and then we'll air it up slowly, and that will bring the curvature of this cowl piece back up. That, I wanna straighten it as best I can before I cut anything, so I get most of the rigidity back, because you can see the, this top part of this wall is kind of bowed back. Uh, same with right here. So I wanna get it pushed back as, ba as close to where it was originally as possible. Unfortunately, I have to leave the windshield in it temporarily, early uh, so I'm just gonna repair this you know quick and dirty as fast as I can and as efficiently as I can I'm probably gonna skin it along this inside edge here and just kind of hammer and dolly it straight and get it as close as I can throw a skim coat of filler on it and be done with it so let's go ahead and get this get to it oh, this look beautifully. go slow it's freaking working this is working I should have done this forever ago Hey, I got all the Bondo off. Well, Sean, I owe you a football. I just came back to him. I don't know what happened, man. It did. Dude, that worked beautifully. That's going to be a great slow-mo shot. Well, you wouldn't think so, but that football thing actually worked pretty dang well. There's a lot filler on this panel. I think I can actually get it most of the way straight. Uh, so like I said, I'm gonna straighten this thing as much as I can before I even think about cutting anything. I still need to straighten this spot. Uh, this is coming out. This one's actually high now, so I need to tap it back down. But yeah, ball kind of blew up my face. I got one massive piece of filler. Look at this. Like really? Is that really necessary? It's all shaped to the contour of the windshield wiper part and it's, this is just ridiculous. So I'm gonna get some 80 grit on a DA and I'm just gonna have at it, see where I get with it and then kind of just shot back most of this back up because this stuff is everywhere. Once that thing exploded and went all over the roof, I mean, it's on like everything on this car. It's all over the place. So got some cleanup to do. <laughs> All right, so I was straightening this thing out. I was trying to see if I could possibly save it, but if you just look at this thing, it's a waterbed. It's not happening. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that step. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top of this thing out. You can see how I got it marked out on both sides. I'm gonna start here, then I can get on these edges and kind of work these edges, because you can see when the hood flew up, it actually crinkled right here. Uh, so I'm gonna try to pound that out as best I can to get my edges good. This edge is good. This edge is good until about here. You can actually see where it dips in right there. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this out, hopefully be able to get a hammer in here, and get that straightened out. And my goal is to be able to leave this edge entirely and then I'm just stitch welding on the top, which makes it super easy. Um, but I do have the whole thing. Can't pull the window out. I wanna pull the window out. If, it, if I could, it'd be way easier. So I can weld it like way down here and it's not a big deal. But I have to drive the car in two days, so I can't pull the glass out yet. But I can always get another one of those at a junkyard, so it's not like that's terrible if I have to do this again. Yeah, I wanna see if I can just do it once. I'm gonna cut this out and then I can kinda of get in there and figure out what else needs to be straightened. But there's no point in trying to save these. They're, they're really bad. All right, so I figured out why my car, every time it rains, fills up with water on the passenger side. So this, can't really see it, unless maybe if I turn this all the way up, that's the heater box, like in the car. So what's happening is once it, you know, rains a bunch, all the water that lands in the cowl and off the windshield drains into here, there's a drain right there. Well, as you can see, that drain is full of stuff. So once it gets to a certain water level, it just goes directly into my car. <laughs> So there isn't a leak going on on these seals. It's actually right here, which is what I figured, but I couldn't get in there well enough with everything in here. So now I can go and vacuum all that crap out. A bunch more on that side, but uh, this is looking a little bit better. It looks worse before it gets better, I promise. Now I think what I'm gonna do is actually strip this uh, a little bit more to bare metal so I can see everything clearly. Uh, and then I'll get in here and try to tap this out the best I can. Same with this area right here. And hopefully get this thing to where I can weld in a new piece.
All right, well, surprisingly it runs, if you can believe that. Uh, it runs actually a lot better because I, I took all the vacuum stuff that was hanging over here, that was all cut up, threw that all that away, capped it. Same with over here, there was a cruise control module that sits right here. I didn't know what it was. It took me a while to figure out what it was. So it was a cruise control piece right here. Uh, I ditched that and then capped it. Uh, now it actually runs pretty good. Pretty happy about that. I don't have this big clunky thing sitting under there anymore. Uh, fired up, runs idles good. So I didn't cut anything out that I have to put back. We just have some wiring down there we gotta clean up and uh, the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna work on the cow actually getting it welded in now. Uh, I've kind of procrastinated getting everything else cleaned around it. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and actually skin in the cow, finally. So there's a couple of ways to go about doing this. There's not really a right or a wrong way in my opinion. The correct, I guess technically the correct way is if you really wanna do this right way is you would split all these spot welds all the way around this thing and all the way down and then peel this in one big piece and then put a whole new one on. Obviously I didn't get that much material. I just got the top because I was limited by time and material in the junkyard. So what I ended up doing, this is just the way I'm going about it. Cause like I said, you can go about this a bunch of different ways. So what I did is I cut it flush on the top. So this is this top edge all the way around. So I just picked this corner. Now what that'll do for me is it gives me an existing edge. So like I said, I really, really, really don't want to weld inside the window channel here because obviously I can't pull the glass. So what I did was I basically followed the curvature of this thing all the way around and kept that top line. So essentially, if I cut this in the same spot that I cut the other one, the top sheet metal should lay in the exact same spot or very, very, very close to it as the old one did. Now being this is not gonna be the most perfect you know, car in the world, I'm not worried about it being exactly perfect. If I need to shim one of the fenders just a hair to make it match a little bit, you know, I'm not overly worried about that. The only thing I am worried about is warping it. But the nice thing about welding it on that corner is that you'll have a vertical and horizontal plane coming together. So typically it should not warp almost at all as long as we tack it all the way around and go in circles a million times. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go about doing it. I think it makes the most sense. Uh, there's no reason to brace anything because it was bent anyways. So now we can see this fire wall section is now straight along the hood. It was bowed in really, really bad. You can actually see you could use a little bit more tapping to get it just quite perfect along there. It's a little bit bowed back still. Uh, so I'll probably do that. And other than that, I'm just gonna go ahead and skin this along this edge, cut it, lay it on, start tacking it in. Okay, so I pretty much got this thing ready to weld. I messed up when I cut this off and I accidentally cut this lower piece off, which holds the windshield wiper on. So I went ahead and I stitch welded it into the actual body. So we're just skinning this top layer now. Normally that bottom part is uh, that holds the wiper is part of the cowl. But like I said, I cut it off. So we're gonna ignore that. I'm just skinning the top piece. Uh, so what I did is I, I used this top corner edge, like I had said. Now this was all bent up. So one thing you gotta keep in mind, if you're gonna do it the way that I did, like I said, this isn't the right, necessarily the right way. The right way is to skin, reskin, and replace the entire cowl. Pull the windshield, go all the way to the down here by the firewall and do the whole thing in one shot. That's the right way to do it. If you're gonna do it the way that I did, you're gonna have to consider that the cowl is now bent and you're trying to put a straight piece on a bent piece. So along the firewall, the lines might not look perfect and likewise over here. So uh, when I'm going to weld this thing on, I'm gonna realize that this might be in a different position than the body. Uh, so what I've been doing is kind of tapping, hammering, dolling this thing, this edge where I want it. So when I weld this panel on, I can kind of massage it where I need it. Right now, the, the edges are looking really, really good. Uh, they line up really nicely. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of start on one way. Uh, I'll probably tack the outsides on both sides to kind of work my way to the center. You don't necessarily wanna work center out on this car because this has a panel, which you can see, that sits over all this stuff and hides it all. Uh, but you do see these corners where the, where the hood and the fenders come together. So these need to be the most attention to detail. These need to be perfect. I am gonna start from the outside working in uh, and we're just gonna kind of hammer and doll it and fit it as we go and kind of work it to the center.
All right, guys, slowly looking like a car again. So you'll notice I have a red hood on it. I'm not using the old hood. The old hood was actually a brand new Chinesium hood. So in my eyes, it was a pile of garbage. It was very thin sheet metal. Problem with that is it was nice and straight initially, but like the, or the corners back here, caught the, the old cowl and it buckled them. And so, I don't know, it's just a cheap Chinesium hood. Don't want to run it. This is an actual Ford hood. It has a couple nicks I can fix, a couple little dimples, but nothing too crazy. The underside of it's perfect. I pulled it off of a mint convertible in the junkyard. So I know this hood's in a lot better shape and it's just better for what I want to do with the car. I'd rather have a actual Ford hood on it. Brand new LMR cowl panel. So I put that all on. You can see our body lines look good. This is what I was checking. So I uh, have everything kind of lined up to make sure that everything I'm welding uh, looks like it'll work. So I'm expecting to have a, a thin layer of filler around this thing, maybe to just uh, a glaze coat just to make sure the body lines are the same. But I'm not gonna do that until I have all the panels on the car and I'm gapping it. I'm gonna actually doing body work on it because I am gonna spray this car together. So I'm gonna do a lot of the body work off the car on the panels, uh, sanding and whatnot, but I will be spraying this car assembled. It's way easier and it just, just for time, it makes a lot more sense. This isn't a show car by any means either. So I'm not too worried about that, but yeah. So you can see all this stuff's lining up really, really well. You can see the body lines look fantastic now. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. I was getting concerned because I have some low spots in the center that I did not do a good, good job cutting on just because I'm rushing this. So I'm gonna go back and make sure that everything still fits underneath. I'm gonna pull the hood off, kind of finish well the whole thing. I'll come back to you guys when this thing's fully welded. So let's get after it. All right guys, cow's all welded on. Looks pretty good, happy with it. You can see all my edges look pretty decent. Up here it's a little, this one's all right. That side's a little rough uh, because of the way the hood bent back. It made it really, really difficult to weld. I also just stitched the back. There's no reason to fully weld it in my opinion. I mean, it's hollow right here. It's, it, the water goes in there. So it's, I, I don't really, I don't know. I'm gonna seam it up. So I'm gonna make sure it's all sealed no matter what, but I just feel like it's a waste of time to fully weld 360 weld this piece versus, you know, I'll f I fully welded the front and the sides, but I just I just stitched the back. So not the end of the world. I don't think it's too big a deal. I have a feeling I'll be doing this again in the future just because uh, if I if I go pretty crazy with the car uh, one day and the motor comes out, I'm definitely going to redo the cowl again and I'm going to do a bead rolled panel on it. But anyways, this will work for now. So the next thing is uh, actually getting some filler on this thing. Uh, it's not, it's pretty freaking smooth all the way across. I mean, you can see it looks really good. So I'm just going to do a little bit of filler on this front edge, front seam right here, just to kind of make sure it looks a little bit better. Like when I open the hood, uh, I don't want to be looking at at some of these welds, these weld surfaces that don't really look the greatest. So I'm gonna just do a little thin, thin, thin coat of glaze across there, basically with my finger and then just kind of block it out, fill in all the little pinholes. And I think I'll call that good enough. Go ahead and do all the edges and go ahead and get this thing primered and start mocking up for paint. All right, guys, well, it's been a long day or two or two days or however long it's been, but either way, we've had a lot of progress and it, it feels really good seeing it all. So my neighbor, Tom and I, I got the hood on. So massive thank you to him. He's been a big help over the weekend, kind of helping me with tools and fitting stuff because I've been here by myself. So it's been nice having a second hand every once in a while when I need it. But look at these gaps, look at that. 
I mean, this is, I haven't even gapped anything, like, actually, we just kind of threw everything on. Um, I'm intentionally leaving this gap large, uh, so when I open the hood, I don't chip the, bo the body fill off. Um, there's a light skim coat on this thing just to make it all good. Uh, the back looks good, front looks good. I'm very, very happy with this. This whole thing looks way better. Like I said, this is me skinning it. It's not a proper replacement of a cow panel, but either way, it looks so much better. So much better than it did uh, all the way across. Uh, the hood pins are kind of holding it up right now, uh, but this is the other hood that we're using. <sighs> my dog. But this is the hood that we're using. Uh, it's an actual Ford hood, so it fits a little bit better. Uh, it's not all bent up, so this one fits a lot better for sure. But yeah, we got the, the new header panel on. This thing isn't all beat up. So you can see whoever had this car before me literally cut all of this stuff out for whatever weird reason. And you can see like that's what it's supposed to look like. And then I don't know what they were doing here. But yeah, so that's all replaced now. Got that from LMR and then I sanded up the bumper face. So it's not perfect, but it works for now. Uh, this nose cone is pretty cracked, which is kind of a bummer, but yeah. guys next day you can finally see this thing out in the sunlight man it looks so much different i can't even get over how much different this thing looks it looks like a mustang like i'm sorry but i hate aftermarket headlights and fox bodies i think they look stupid uh unless your car is wide bodied and a bunch of aero crazy paint job crazy wheels crazy stuff on it just put the stock headlights in it that's what it's designed for it same with people that put different grills and weird fascias and just I don't know, it, it turns into a ricer really quick. So I'm really happy with this thing, the way it came out, the cow looks amazing. I haven't gapped a single panel yet. I'm gonna slide the hood just a hair more back, but you can see everything lines up so much better. Uh, the gaps are way better, the headlights look way better. Uh, the bumper looks way better. It just, everything looks better. It, it needs to be one color, but for now I can tolerate it. Uh, I'd rather drive it around like this than drive it around with that messed up black front clip. Didn't fit very well at all, so. I'd say either way, I'm really, really happy with this. So unfortunately I did want to paint it in this video, but it's kind of one of those things where I got to be patient with this kind of stuff and I don't want to rush it, especially being black paint. So the next video with this, we'll probably spend the next week. I have finals. So during the finals, obviously I'm not going to be doing too much automotive work, but I got two weeks of finals coming up. I'm going to kind of bust through those and then we'll intermittently in breaks of studying, I'll be doing a little bit of body work on the car together because uh, I'm gonna spray this car assembled. So uh, throughout the week, I'll kind of do some body work on it, get the panels fitted a little better. Hopefully in about two weeks, we'll spray some color on it. And we'll make it match the rest of the car. So hope you guys are excited for that. Like the video if you did enjoy it. Let me do think down in the comments below and uh, I'll see you guys next video with the Fox body. I'm pumped for this thing, it looks good. Stop.